The Senate Executive Committee meeting is called to order. I'll start by taking roll call to ensure on the record, the president of all committee members. Senator Poor, the vice chair. Senator Poor, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here. Senator Townsend. Here. Senator McDowell. Senator McDowell. I'll come back to Senator McDowell. Senator Cloutier. Present. Senator Hawker. Present. And Senator McBride, myself as chair. Now back to Senator McDowell. I want to make sure uh, he's in. Senator McDowell. We'll wait for a moment and make sure that uh, he has a uh, connection to the meeting. Bowery, can you help me with that? I will connect, try to connect with Senator McDowell now. It looks like he dropped off the meeting. Then in that case, we're going to take a very short standing recess and we'll see if we can get him uh, back up to the meeting. Is that something we can do, Valerie? Is that? Uh... Yes, I will keep you updated, Senator McBride. Thank you.
All right, good afternoon, everyone. The Senate Executive Committee meeting is called to order. I'll start by taking roll call to ensure on the record the presence of all committee members. Senator Porter. Here. Senator Townsend. Here. Senator McDowell. Here. Senator Hocker. Here. Senator Cloutier. Senator Cloutier. Are oh, you get on now? Present. You okay now, right? Okay. Yeah, he's on. Okay. And myself, Senator McBride, as chair. Six members being present. I can confirm that each member's identity has been authenticated by me as committee chair. Everyone is asked to please place yourself on mute should a member wish to speak please use the raise hand feature within Zoom to be called upon. I will do my best to call on committee members in the order of raised hands. You may also raise your hand like this and perhaps I'll see it. All members will be given the opportunity to address each nominee. A suggestion, a, as a shortcut to unmuting yourself, you may press and hold the space bar on your device while you speak. And that's a very uh, helpful feature when you're unmuting yourself. Are there any motions at this time? Senator Poor. Yes, I do, Senator, if that's okay with you. I make Please. the motion that the executive committee accept and approve the May 14th, 2020 memorandum from the president pro tem and also the speaker of the house regarding the time and the place for next meeting and also the process for the legislative committees on first meeting. Thank you, Senator Poor. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Senator Townsend has second the motion. Are there any questions or comments concerning the motion? I will have one. Because this committee meeting is being broadcast virtually, I ask for a roll call of the committee on the motion. Senator Poor. On the motion. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Senator McDowell. Senator McDowell. Need to take off the beer. Yes. yes. There you go. Senator Hocker. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. And myself, Senator McBride voting yes. There have been six yeses on the motion. The motion is passed. I want to note that all members of the Senate have been invited to this committee meeting. And uh, I would mention that uh, Senator Pettyjohn is on the meeting. Senator Ennis is on the meeting. Senator Sokola is on the meeting. Senator Lawson is on the meeting. Senator Lopez is on the meeting. Senator Pardee is on the meeting. Senator Hansen is on the meeting and Senator Sturgeon is on the meeting. I don't uh, believe I've missed anyone. If they do, please. Senator. All right, mm -hmm. so welcome uh, to my, and Senator Richardson has joined us. Senator Richardson, good afternoon. Good afternoon to all the colleagues. I want to note that all members <coughs> of the Senate have been invited to the committee meeting as would normally be the custom. Any member of the Senate may join the executive committee meeting and from time to time may wish to ask a question or make comments. I welcome my colleagues who have joined us here today. And as protocol, I will turn to committee members first for the questions and or comments, and then follow by calling on senators who are not members of the committee. Please use your raised hand, as I mentioned before, uh, if you wish to speak. Before we get started with the business of the committee, I wanna take a moment to thank everyone for being with us here today as we move forward with our Senate Executive Committee broadcast virtually in response to COVID-19 pandemic. The last several months have certainly been challenging for not only legislators and staff, but for all Delawareans as we together work through a most difficult time of our lives. We will get through this pandemic whose impact on families, loved ones, and the way of life for all of us as Delawareans has been devastating. 
This is certainly uncharted waters. We've heard that term a number of times over the last two to three months. A great deal of work has gone in to this uh, meeting and getting us to this point today. Members of the House and Senate from all four caucuses, attorneys and staff from all four caucuses, legislative council attorneys and staff, the Comptroller General's Office has taken part in a significant number of calls and planning meetings virtually over this time to get us to where we are today. Getting us into an executive committee meeting broadcast virtually was not as simple as having everyone jump on a Zoom meeting. There, of course, were legal and constitutional matters that were vetted to ensure this committee meeting broadcast virtually is performed properly, maintaining the integrity of the institution and the openness and transparency that the public expects and to which we are entitled. We took each step towards today with the public in mind, how to maintain the safety of the members of the legislature, staff and public in light of the pandemic. On an average day, there are hundreds of members of the public, agency staff, legislative staff and so forth in legislative hall and yet ensure transparency of our committee meetings and legislative sessions and maximize access to our citizens in this virtual forum. The service that each of us as legislators perform on behalf of our constituents is paramount. Our constituents expect it of us, and so we have moved into this virtual world to ensure that the business of the state legislative branch may continue until it is appropriate for us to all once again meet in purpose and in person. In addition to the legal side of this issue, we of course would not be able to do what we're doing today without the expertise of our IT staff, both our IT leaders inside Legislative Hall, who we are grateful to work with every day, as well as our new friends, the project manners and IT technical staff support from DTI, who have worked tirelessly to ensure that the technology behind our proceedings are secure, sound, and able to deliver these proceedings in seamless fashion to the public. Before I bring the first nominee before the committee, are there any questions from members of the committee? All right, hearing none. Uh, I do know that uh, I think I just saw Senator Lockman join us today. Good afternoon, Senator Lockman. I had announced other senators that have joined us. With that, I thank everyone for your patience as we now proceed with the agenda of the Senate Executive Minute. To each nominee, as I call your name, please unmute yourself. I'll ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you would like to serve in the position to which the governor has nominated you. We will then turn to questions and or comments from committee members and other members of the Senate who are present. Today, we're honored to have first nominee, Colonel Nathaniel McQueen. He has been nominated as Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Uh, Colonel McQueen, I'm looking for you on the screen. I'm hopeful to see you. Colonel McQueen is here, correct? Yes, sir. Colonel McQueen, good afternoon. And, and let me, uh, if I can, Colonel, um, I know that I speak for all when I tell you uh, how proud we are of you and your organization with the state police and all that it, you have done and are doing in such very difficult times. So, Colonel, good afternoon. And if you would uh, state your name for the record, uh, tell the committee a little bit about yourself and uh, why you are seeking such an important and difficult job as Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. The floor is yours, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, for the record, Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, Jr. Mr. Chair, members of the Senate Executive Committee, and members of the Senate, good afternoon. I'm honored and humbled as I appear before you 
today to seek your confirmation. I'm qualified to fulfill the duties as a secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security based on my education, specialized training, work experience, and leadership as a Delaware State Trooper. My formal education includes a bachelor's degree in behavioral science and a master's degree in social work. I am also a graduate of the FBI National Academy and the FBI National Executive, Executive Institute, as well as the Anti-Defamation League Counterterrorism Training, to name a few. My leadership skills have been further developed by having opportunities to serve on several local, state, regional, and national boards and committees focused on safety concerns impacting our communities. During my last 31 and a half years of law enforcement service, I have performed a variety of assignments in operational and administrative positions. My assignments included numerous leadership roles, serving as a detective sergeant, a patrol sergeant, a traffic lieutenant, and a criminal lieutenant. I also served as troop commander of Troop 9, Troop 1, and Troop 2 before being promoted to major, where I was assigned as a statewide operations major and the Newcastle County operations major before being promoted to the rank of colonel. Since being appointed to colonel in December of 2012, I've had the opportunity to gain valuable leadership and management experience, currently managing approximately 985 of the 1,260 employees assigned to the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. I've had the opportunity to work with three prior DSHS secretaries, along with other cabinet secretaries on several critical incidents, public health emergencies, and weather-related events impacting our state. I have also worked with many current division directors, and I've served as acting secretary on numerous occasions. As superintendent, I have been committed to strengthening community partnerships, violent crime reduction, and leveraging technology to improve our efficiency. I have experience providing leadership internally and externally with our community partners to improve traffic safety and the overall safety of communities across our state. My life experience, social work education, and law enforcement training has given me a better understanding of mental health, substance use disorder, and the effects of trauma. It has also allowed me to gain strong understanding of state government protocols, processes, policies, and applicable laws. I've had the opportunity to build professional relationships with federal, state, and local partners, as well as community organizations, labor organizations, and private industry. I have been committed to a lifetime of service to my country as a Marine and to my community as a Delaware State Trooper. An appointment as the next Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security would afford me the opportunity to continue to serve. I remain committed to the dedicated men and women of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security as we strive to ensure the safety and security of our great state. I thank you again for the opportunity to appear before you as you consider my confirmation. I'm prepared to answer questions you may have at this time. Colonel McQueen, uh, again, thank you very much for appearing before the committee today. Uh, again, uh, I know that when I received uh, your name from the governor as a nominee, I couldn't think of a finer choice to head up the department. Uh, you have had a, a tremendously successful career in uh, policing work. And I know that you will do a wonderful job as our next secretary. Are there other committee members have questions, comments for the Colonel? Any committee Senator. members at all? Senator. Senator. Senator, Senator McDowell. Senator McDowell is the floor. Thank you, Senator McBride. Um, Colonel McQueen, I just want to say to you, uh, first of all, you've been an exemplary leader of the, police, of the state police force, uh, uh, the entire force of which we can be proud of. And uh, I think that um, your move on to uh, Secretary of uh, Safety and Homeland Security 
is the perfect next move. Uh, maybe if it isn't for you, it is for us, the citizens of Delaware, because uh, we now face a very, very serious adversary in the form of one tiny little bug. And uh, it's going to take all of our ingenuity and all of your training and every, to add to the forces that we can muster against this um, pa pandemic. So I wish you the best luck in all that. And I want to finish by saying, I, sir, am honored that one of my, my last official acts will be to vote for you for this office. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator McDowell. Uh, Senator Poor has uh, asked to speak and then Senator Townsend after her. Thank Senator you. Poor. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, Colonel McQueen, it is an honor to have you before us. Um, I just want to actually make a comment and state that uh, in the job that you have done leading the state police um, and the years that I've had the opportunity to work for you, your response, your calm demeanor, and uh, the things that you have done for our state has gone um, completely above and beyond. And I'm thankful for your leadership, but more importantly, as you move into this new role, I think all of those qualities will transfer uh, quite well. And um, I think this is a great day for, for you and for the state of Delaware. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Poor. Senator Townsend. Thank and you. then Senator Hawker is uh, next to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Colonel. Um, thank you for all your service up to this point. Thanks for the call yesterday. Um, as, as you and I discussed, it's, I think it's, you said bittersweet for you. I think it's bittersweet for, for everybody to see you change roles from one that has been so fantastic to see you thrive in. Um, this goes to all the nominees, but I think in many ways, particularly to you, Colonel, that it would be so wonderful to be in person uh, today in particular because this is all a family affair. I mean nominees and nominations in the center, always a family affair. Senator McBride always makes sure to honor the families that come and join the nominees. But in your in your instance as well, it's a much bigger family with all, all the law enforcement, all the state police. And it would be wonderful to see everybody together uh, to mark the occasion that this is. So um, really wish we could do that, but obviously the times don't allow it. And um, to Senator McDowell's point, I very much appreciate your efforts taking a position that is really critical to making sure that we can safely transition to whatever it is we're going to be transitioning uh, to. Uh, it's been an honor to, to work on issues with you and your role as Colonel, and I look forward to doing so in your new role. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, I, I hope that you uh, navigate the transition of having to wear suits a lot more than, than the blues uh, and expanding your, uh, your tie collection too to match. It's not going to be so easy day to day now on that front. Um, but good luck as you as you navigate the transition from the head of the state police to the head of the agency that oversees the state police ultimately. And I look forward to seeing that balance uh, be struck with the the same kind of success and professionalism that I think has embodied your entire career. Uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Townsend. Uh, Senator Hockford. Senator Mc, uh, Colonel. McQueen, I want to thank you for being in front of us today and thank you for the job that you have done on the state police. And yeah, I see you so many times being down here in Sussex County for so many of the Sussex County functions. And I know you are a colonel for the entire state. And uh, I just have one concern and uh, I am just glad to know that Representative Smith did not rub off on you at all the times <laughs> that you worked with him. So. You will do a great job. I'm happy to be able to vote for you. I think you're a great nominee and I think you are the right person for the job. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Hawker. Any other uh, committee members? Senator Cloutier. Thank you. Colonel, I do want to thank you for your service, for all you have done. I'm very proud of you and your commitment to this job. Feel safe that you're going to protect all of us. And I really did appreciate uh, the call. It meant a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cloutier. Any other uh, senators wish to make comments or questions? If not, um, Colonel, uh, thank you so very much uh, for appearing before the committee today. Thank you, sir. And thank you for your time. You're welcome. The next nominee that will come before the committee, the appointee for resident judge of Superior Court of Newcastle County, 
the Honorable Charles Butler. Uh, Judge Butler, um, if you would uh, turn your mic on wherever you are there and uh, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you very yes. much, uh, Senator. Um, and I, and I wanna thank the Senate and the Executive Committee for taking up these nominations today in, uh, in this uh, quite historic proceeding. Um, uh, as you probably all know, I am currently a sitting judge on Superior Court and the nomination is to become the resident judge for the court, which obviously involves uh, some leadership and management. So I thought I'd talk uh, for a few minutes about uh, those aspects of my career history uh, I am a, uh, uh, a former uh, president of the senior class of Salesianum uh, and, uh, and was for a while a shop steward for the Teamsters uh, Local 326. Um, my employer did what all employers do with good shop stewards. They hire them out of the bargaining unit and into management. So I became a manager and, and ultimately uh, ran a terminal with about 50 employees uh, with everything from the lease to the payroll to the scheduling and all the rest of it. Uh, going back to the University of Delaware to graduate and ultimately law school, as a lawyer, I've trained uh, or, or managed about five or six different functioning trial units within the attorney general's office and ultimately became the chief deputy attorney general under A.G. Biden uh, with five divisions and several hundred attorneys, uh, as well as an equal number of support staff before coming to the bench. Um, I, uh, I believe that um, we're put on this earth for a reason. Uh, sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what that is. Um, but for me, uh, that reason and what animates my work day and getting up every day, five divisions and several hundred service. attorneys to the public. And I think I share that with a lot of you uh, that uh, we're here for a reason and the reason is to serve others. Um, it just happens that the way my service ran, um, I drew an affinity for the rule of law and for the administration of justice. And it's now my conviction that uh, the judicial function is essential to the rule of law and to the functioning of a, of a well-organized democracy. Uh, so I see challenges, particularly on the administration side, when it comes to the administration of justice. I think I have an affinity and a capacity to do more. And as resident judge, that's exactly what I hope to fulfill over the next 12 years. And happy to answer any questions from any senator. Uh, Judge Butler, thank you so very much, uh, and thank you for your service to the state of Delaware. Are there uh, comments from members? Uh, Senator Poor has raised her hand. Senator Townsend has also raised his hand. Senator Poor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Judge Butler, it is great to have you in front of us. Uh, more importantly, um, I really, really loved in your application, or actually on your resume, as you stated, uh, being a graduate of University of Delaware's, how you must have done well enough. You had a great time, but must have done well enough in order to get into law school. Just um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. So I uh, just want to let you know, we actually do read your information. And uh, that was, uh, that was a, a good laugh, um, at least for me. That being said, I knew I liked you, but to even hear more so that you're a union person, it just warms my heart. So uh, I look forward to confirming you and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Senator Poor. Senator Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Honor, I look forward to linking up. Um, we, we traded phone calls. I want to echo Senator Poor's point about your application. As I mentioned in my voicemail yesterday, probably the funniest application I've ever seen uh, in my eight years as a Senator. Um, now here, and you didn't mention teams are specifically, you talked about your role a little bit, but now that you're in your part, you're part of 326, it makes more sense now. Um, part of our phone call later on in the coming weeks will be to find out if you knew my uncle or not, it was 326 as well. Um, it does give me pause now whether I should reconsider my vote for you. And I say that with <laughs> the deepest of affinity for all our friends at 326, but obviously you've gone on 
uh, and stellar, stellar service, stellar career. Look forward to, uh, to supporting you, but also following up um, on, the, uh, on the, the phone tag. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Towns. Any other comments from uh, members of the committee? Senator Cloutier? Thank you, Honorable Butler. I do want to say I followed you through the years. I've known you for a long time, and I am thrilled that you are doing this. We're going to vote you to do this, and uh, thank you for being here today. Um, good luck. Thank you, Senator. Like like uh, Senator Cloutier, I I do feel like I'm uh, I, I'm this is a home crowd for me. I know an awful lot of you over the years, and uh, respect uh, greatly the work you do. And for my new friends, hello, Senator McDowell, uh, we're going to miss you. And uh, Judge Butler, I would echo that. that <laughs> I've had the honor of working with Senator McDowell for a long time, and we are definitely going to miss him, all of us. Uh, any other questions from members of the committee uh, or our senator guests today? Seeing none, uh, thank you. Judge Butler, and uh, I would like to go now to the next nominee that we have before us today, Judge of the Superior Court, Francis Jones, Jr. Good afternoon, Senators. Uh, Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, everything you did to uh, put this together. Um, I am hum humbled and honored to be the governor's nominee for this uh, position. I have known Charlie Butler since law school, and he was a tough act to follow in law school, and he's remained a tough act to follow. Um, like Judge Butler, I am a Delaware native. Uh, unlike Judge Butler, I went to St. Mars High School, not Slaziano. Um, after high school, I uh, went to college at uh, Catholic University in D.C., mostly to play baseball. But when that didn't work out very well, I decided I better, better start to study. And uh, I remained at CU to uh, uh, complete my uh, Juris Doctorate degree. We all have things in life that, that moments in life that change our lives. And, and the, the thing that changed my professional life all those many years ago was when Justice McNeely of the Delaware Supreme Court offered me a job to come home and clerk. And I did that. Um, following that clerkship, um, I was fortunate enough to have another life changing experience and that was to be hired by Morris James in Wilmington. And I have remained at Morris James since 1983. Um, I have basically practiced in the Superior Court my entire career. Uh, I have probably tried more than 60 civil jury trials to uh, verdict in the Superior Court uh, in all the counties, Newcastle County, Sussex and Kent County. For the last half a dozen years or so, a half of my practice has been not in Newcastle where I live, but in Sussex County uh, with the Mars James Group in Sussex County. As part of my practice, I, I have not only um, tried a very number of cases, but I have been selected by parties to serve as an arbitrator where you are essentially the judge, the jury, the finder of fact, you make the ultimate conclusion. I have arbitrated as a binding arbitrator over 1,500 ca cases in, in my career. Uh, I've also served as a mediator. Um, I think that that, that experience uh, demonstrates that, that at least folks at the bar think that uh, I'm fair. I have the ability to analyze the issues that need to be analyzed and come to a reasoned decision and result. Um, why do I want to do this? this is probably on your mind. Um, from a very, very young age, my parents instilled in me uh, the obligation of public service. And in fact, I hope they're listening. They, along with my sisters in North Wilmington, are, are probably listening to this. And, and, and I hope they got the technology straight. Uh, and, and I know, Senators, when you usually do this, because I've watched this on a number of occasions, there's a whole bunch of people sitting behind the nominee. Well, as you can see, there's nobody sitting behind me, but that doesn't mean the family isn't, isn't, isn't involved and not on the phone. Uh, my wife is, uh, is at our beach house in Sussex County, and we've been married for 39 years, and, and frankly, if it hadn't been for her, I wouldn't be here. 
Um, my son is home and my daughter is in Colorado and I just wanted to give those folks a shout out. But why? Why do I want to do this? Public, public service is very, very important to me. Um, uh, the thing that fell into my lap a number of years ago uh, was something called high school mock trial. And for the last 30 years, I have been actively involved in, in that project. Uh, I was one of the founders of the project in Delaware. I've had an opportunity to not only work at the state level, but also at the national level, all with the, the idea of, of attempting to have some influence on the young people of our society and give them some guidance so that they can become um, meaningful citizens and understand what the rule of law is all about. Um, I'm proud to say that some of my some of my students and some of the folks in the program went on to become not only uh, lawyers but judges and, and a whole lot of other things that made them very productive members of society. I've served on a number of um, court committees, but I think what I can bring uniquely to the Superior Court bench is that I think a trial court bench is served well when someone with civil trial experience wants to sit on that bench. And um, I've been a very, very active practitioner for a very, very long time. And I, and I think I can bring some of that exp experience, hopefully to benefit uh, my colleagues on the bench. If I'm so fortunate for you to confirm me. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Jones, uh, thank you so very much. Uh, I would make note that um, it's, it's sad at the very least that your family members and, and other nominees also cannot be with you today. You know, that's always one of the highlights when we uh, work on nominations in the Senate where the family members are allowed to sit on the floor, uh, listen to the testimony. They're allowed to be there uh, when the Senate votes on the nominees. And uh, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of um, un, un dissatisfying things about COVID and uh, this is one of them. But thank you very much and thank you for mentioning your family members. Are there questions, uh, Senator Townsend? You have your hand up, yes sir. Hey Mr. Chair, just briefly, Pete, I had a whole series of things I wanted to say to this rib you. Uh, but knowing that your family is listening in, I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that. An honor to them. I just want to get all that in before we put the word honorable in front of your name. Um, also, I thought you might become the funniest member of the bench, uh, but at reading Judge Butler's application, clearly you've still got a way to go. Uh, so I encourage you to to learn from your colleagues. Uh, but I do, I do to your final point about being a practitioner for so long. I really do appreciate uh, you know it, it's in its own way the sacrifice that you make to then contribute to public service and bringing your uh, your experience to the uh, to the bench and you know all the courts in Delaware are, are so important in their in their own ways and are rightfully heralded and so it's going to be fantastic to see you um, lend your 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 talents and your your time and service to Delaware and I'm very glad that uh, that we have reached this day so congrats Pete thank you Senator and uh, I also like to congratulate you again publicly as as the new dad for the second time. Thank you. We'll get to that when we talk to the JP nominees, what they had to put up with yesterday, particularly Candace, uh, as my toddler was not the most well-behaved member of the family yesterday during the calls, but appreciate it. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Senator Townsend. Senator uh, Hawker wanted to uh, speak. Senator Hawker, the floor is yours, sir. Mr. Jones, I want to thank you for coming in front of us today and for this interview. And I was a little bit concerned. I'm sorry I wasn't able to take your call, but I'm a little bit concerned because Judge Chandler is a good friend of mine. He always called me and said something good about all the uh, nominees to be judges, and I didn't hear from him. But just as soon as you mentioned Judge McNally's name, I knew you're a great guy because I knew him from his hunting days when he used to hunt with Raymond Banks, who is my wife's uncle. So I knew him well from those days. I uh, know that you'll do a great job, and uh, I'm happy to be able to vote for you today. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Hawker. Any other comments from uh, committee members? Uh, from any other senator? Uh, senator Cloutier. Yes, it's, it's, are we on? Okay, as long as, uh, thank you. As long as we're bringing up family, uh, it was my first thought about missing all the fa family members, but also I want to bring up your references, uh, Judge Jan Jordan and Joseph Seitz. So you must be okay. Good luck. Thank you. 
Thank you for serving. Thank you, Senator Cloutier. Uh, seeing no other members uh, wanting to speak, uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. The next uh, nominee that we will have come before us, Justice of the Peace appointee, Walter Newton. Walter, Mr. Newton. Thank you, Senator McBride, and thank the you. Who is yours, sir? Uh, my senator is uh, Senator Lockman. And she I'll, is on. She is on the uh, Zoom today. Yes, I did hear, and I want to thank her for all her support during this whole process. Um, and I also like to thank uh, Governor Carney for having faith in me to execute the position of a, a JP Court Magistrate. Um, I, I grew up in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and 30 years ago, th over almost 31 years ago, I came to Delaware, and I came to Delaware after I got appointed to be a state trooper. I served 29 years with the state police, and uh, one thing I always, uh, with that organization, we always prided ourselves on was being fair, and that's the one thing that going moving forward, not only do I practiced that when I was in law enforcement, but I also moved forward with that same tenacity as a magistrate. Um, during my career with the state police, I was fortunate enough to be a patrol sergeant. I was a public information office officer. I was the director of the public information officer. I was in planning and I was a member of our special operations response team, which taught me teamwork and uh, how to appreciate things because uh, in that particular unit, you, you dealt with uh, a lot of high risk situations. Uh, as I uh, left the state police, I was fortunate enough to become the chief of uniform services for the Justice of the Peace Court, which I had a very uh, enjoyable experience. And I was involved uh, as being in charge of all the state constables and court officers, but uh, have a really grasp the knowledge of the civil process for the, the uh, Justice of the Peace Court. Um, one thing that uh, I put forward is my procedural fairness to all. That's the one thing that I can tell you which drives me to seek this position is to make sure uh, everybody has a voice. And if they don't have a voice, then we really don't have a fair system. Uh, I remember uh, people approaching me when I was a trooper saying, oh, I'm just going to pay the ticket. It, it, it's not worth my time. And I would talk to that talk to them and really have them think about it. And it's, it's, it's their right to, to uh, have their voice heard in, in front of a fair and impartial person to uh, have the matter adjudicated. Um, I um, also am a single father of four kids. That's probably one of the harder things I've done in my life, but um, uh, I would keep them, uh, try to keep my, uh, thumb on them to make sure they don't get in trouble. Um, other than that, I, I can tell you that uh, I was very proud of everything that I did for the state of Delaware. And with the nomination that I received from the governor, I look forward in uh, serving the citizens of Delaware and my community first and most of all. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Newton. And thank you for your service with the Delaware State Police. Are there any uh, questions, comments from members of the committee? Senator Townsend has his hand up. Senator Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, some quick comments that they apply to all the JP nominees. I'll, I'll state real quick though, Mr. Newton, pleasure on speaking on the phone yesterday and glad to know we have Ray, Sergeant Ray Pedden in common. Um, and also congratulations to your success with your children and the triplets moving on uh, you know, the, in the near future here. Um, Thank you, sir. But as we discuss, and as I discuss with all JP nominees, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm extremely um, just delighted by Governor Carney's nomination, the diversity of the nominees, their background, their experience, classroom educator, police officer, probation and parole, alderman from uh, from Dewey, which has got to bring with it all kinds of stories that I would invite uh, Ms. Hester to share with us today. Um, you know, I, I, a younger candidate, right, you know, recently out of law school, just a fantastic collection of diverse perspectives that are going to be coming in. Uh, to the JP system here. So I'm very honored to be part of that process. Um, what, I would say this applies to all the nominees, so I probably won't speak on each of them. Um, but I, I, as I said on the phone yesterday, I think the issue of bail is one that the legislature knows we've worked on. Uh, we've made reforms and the JP magistrates are at the front line of trying to implement that system. Uh, and I think that between the chief justice and the chief magistrate, there are ongoing conversations in coordination with law enforcement, DOJ and others about 
um, about making sure the system works as intended and works well. Uh, I think, I know Senator Hansen and I, for example, have been in conversations in recent weeks about potential legislation, 2021 probably, not 2020, um, given some things that have developed. Uh, but just overall, it's not lost on me, the decisions that you all are gonna be making, the impact it has on people's lives, and the fact that you're doing it, to your point, Mr. Newton, in the name of justice, um, it's very difficult in ways that I don't know the legislature, uh, any of us uh, can, can you know, personally appreciate. Uh, but thank you for your willingness to do it uh, and to step in on such an important issue of, of the un un unfolding and ongoing bail reform efforts, trying to have the community be safe. Um, I really appreciate your, all your willingness to do that and really encourage you uh, to ask questions um, you know, make sure you're, make sure that you're, that you're getting, uh, the, the input and the, the guidance that, that you're going to need and that you're giving the feedback that, that the frontline adjudicators need to give to make sure the system works well. We'll see you again along the way uh, with legislative efforts from myself and Senator Hansen and others. Um, but for, for today and yesterday on the phone call with each of you, I really appreciate your willingness to hear from uh, one of the legislators who's been involved on the issue because you, you're the ones who are implementing it and it's so critical that we get it right. And I look forward uh, to partnering in those efforts on a, on a going basis. So congrats to you all um, and, and Mr. Newton. Uh, good luck as the, uh, as the triplets uh, transition on. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Townsend. Are there members of the committee? Comments? All right, seeing none. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Newton. The thank next you, nominee Senator. that we have for Justice of the Peace, we Shania Iyong. And if you would please, uh, State your name, and I apologize if I got the uh, pronunciation incorrect. Thank you, Senator McBride, and thank you, um, Senators. My name is Shania Ann, and um, my educational back I'm humbled and um, by this opportunity to address you and by the nomination. My educational background, I have a bachelor's in English with a minor in leadership studies from the University of Richmond. For the last 10 years, I've worked as in the criminal law as a felony trial paralegal at the Attorney General's office. So this experience has familiarized me with the criminal process, such as search warrants, arraignments, and bail guidelines. During, um, while I was working at the Attorney General's office, I attended and graduated from Widener Law School with my Juris Doctorate. So that has given me the ability to interpret and apply legal principles to factual situations and the ability to communicate that both verbally and in writing. One of my major roles um, as a paralegal at the Attorney General's office was drafting legal um, responses to petitioners pardon, parole, and commutation requests. So in making decisions, I had to um, weigh the petition, the nature of the petitioner's crime, their criminal history and disciplinary record with their efforts to rehabilitate themselves while in prison. I had to look at the totality of the circumstances and determine whether or not they'll be able to function outside of a control environment as found in prison. Um, if confirmed, these decision-making skills will translate to my role as a judge as I apply the rule of law to the facts on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, why I want to be a JP judge. Um, I've been very interested in law from a very young age, but that passion really grew while I was an undergrad at University of Richmond when my fellow classmate was stalked and fatally shot by her ex-boyfriend. So me and along with two other students, we um, drafted and wrote a stalking, a bill increasing the penalty for stalkings, which we were able to present before the Virginia House of Delegates. So that experience showed me how, you know, the law can change someone's life. From there, I have volunteered in numerous organizations from Big Sister to Little Sisters, um, I volunteered in Orphanage in Honduras, I've worked in inner city schools. Um, and most recently, I'm involved in an outreach program, Hope Behind the Bars. And um, those experiences, I've come across many people who have been incarcerated, who has found it difficult in rejoining the community. And they have found, um, you know, difficulty um, getting jobs. And so I, in that sense, I was able to see how the law impacts someone's life. So I not only want to be a judge to resolve disputes, but to do so impartially and with equal attention to everybody involved. I thank you again for this um, opportunity to address you and I'm willing to address any questions and concerns that you may have. Ms. Young, thank you so very much. Are there any questions, comments from members of the committee? Seeing none, uh, any other uh, of our Senator guests? If not, uh, thank you for appearing before the committee today. Thank you. You're welcome.
next uh, appointee for Justice of the Peace come before the committee, the Honorable Catherine Hester. Ms. Hester? Thank you, Senator McBride. Thank you, Executive Committee Senators and all the other Senators who a great amount of time and effort to uh, be on this very historic Zoom meeting. And as Senator McBride has uh, mentioned, um, I have, I of some other people as well, I have been honored uh, and privileged to appear actually before some of you uh, eight years ago when I was um, before you for my alderman confirmation hearing. So I know what it's like to have people sit behind you and support you. But I know for a fact that I've had the support of my family, my um, community here in Sussex County. So I don't feel alone at all. And I just, I'm very, very honored and privileged to be here before you again, uh, this time for um, a justice of the peace uh, court uh, uh, position. Um, again, for the record, my name is Catherine Hester. Um, I have been an alderman for in Dewey Beach for the past eight years. And as such, um, my routine, my day really pretty much consists of uh, handling arraignments, trials, parking appeals, um, so civil violations and town ordinances that are committed within the uh, town in corporate limits of uh, Dewey Beach. Um, that's pretty much the routine. I um, also am familiar with reading defendants records, Delgis records, MVA records, um, and I read statutes and I read warrants and some, some of the very similar uh, duties and obligations that a uh, magistrate judge would handle in a JP court. Um, in JP court, as in JP court, which is often referred to as the people's court, many, many different types of people before appear before me in Alderman court, as you can imagine. Some of them tried to come in without um, or with just their bathing suits and their towels, which I'm sure is not gonna be a problem in JP court, but I like people. I have a great respect for the rule of law. Um, I think that it's very important for a judge and I've tried to do this in Alderman court to make sure that everybody gets a fair hearing. Um, everybody who comes before me typically, it's, it's their first time in court, period. They don't know, they're nervous. They're often there without an attorney. Um, they just want to tell their story. And I think uh, besides upholding the rule of law, I think the other uh, very important quality a judge should have is compassion and the willingness to listen and to understand the litigant standing before me. Um, I also think that explaining the process to the litigant is also important because unless somebody understands why you issued the decision that you did, or the process that they're, they're undergoing, they will, they, they will go away probably more confused, right? So I think process and the respect for the law are for, first and foremost. Um, and that's what I've tried to do in the last eight years. Um, my, briefly, my background, which I'm sure you all have uh, read in my, in my paperwork, um, I've, I've had a diverse legal background. I've been a prosecutor. I've been an assistant AG. I've worked in criminal, uh, or I'm sorry, civil defense work. Um, I have worked at all levels of trial court and appellate court. Um, I think that, again, the, the legal competence, I, I believe that I do possess. I also think that the, the like I said earlier, the, the temperament of a judge is, is probably the most, the more important factor here uh, because I've had, a, because of my diverse legal background, I have had, um, I have been tested under a lot, under pressure um, with dealing with trying to balance the interest of justice with challenging facts, difficult litigants, opposing counsel, and defendants. Um, I think it's, it's important to understand the diverse range of legal issues. And because I've had so much, such a broad experience, I am um, lucky, I guess, to have really understood different subject matter uh, competence to better discern the nuances of a variety of cases from a variety of perspectives. Um, the, why I wanna be a magistrate judge, I think this is probably one of the, this is probably gonna be the highlight of my career really and my life here in Sussex County. Um, by nature, I'm firm and I'm compassionate. 
I think it's important to model the judicial decorum, respect, and the ethical behavior that our justice system requires and that our litigants deserve. Um, I am uh, very, I would say, uh, comfortable dealing with people from all walks of life. I've traveled widely. Um, I have uh, lived in two countries. I've lived in cities. I've lived in suburbs. I've lived in rural areas. And now I'm lucky enough to live at the beach. Uh, so it doesn't get better than that. And I'm still able to um, understand and respect people. And, uh, and for the most of my career, I've also uh, engaged in public service because I believe that that is one of the highest forms of service. Um, during in, in my life and my career. If confirmed, I will do my very best to live up to your expectations and also that of the judiciary. And I will continue to work hard to earn the trust and the confidence of the public that I will be serving. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have at this time. Thank you. Ms. Hester, uh, thank you very much. I At the beginning, I was going to say welcome back. I wasn't sure I should say that. I'd <laughs> but it's nice to see you again for certain. Are there any, uh, uh, Senator Cloutier? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Catherine, I understand that you have connections in Brandywine 100 and that yeah. you do make the opportunity to come visit and please come again. Now, if we were meeting down in Dover, who would be your guests? Down in Sussex County? You Sussex mean? County. Right, Sussex County. Who would, would you have as your guests? Well, you, you're welcome. To come. <laughs> okay. I was worried about that. They're very welcome to come anytime, uh, Senator Claudier. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Good luck. Wish, you. You, wish you the best. Thank you very much. Other, uh, other members, uh, questions? Senator Hawker? Senator Hawker, you, you might need to. There I want to thank you for coming in front of us. Uh, I do remember you eight years ago. You know, I represented Dewey Beach for 10 years. I miss not having Dewey Beach now, but Dewey Beach is going to miss you. And my concern is, what are they going to do for an alderman until they have one confirmed with with uh, this appointment? I believe my I do have an assistant alderman, and I believe she'll be stepping in after I leave the court. So I, I, I believe there will be a very smooth transition, Senator. Good. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hawker. Other members of the committee? If not, uh, thank you, Ms. Hester, for appearing today. Thank you, Senator. You're welcome. Senator Lopez. The next uh, nominee that we have to come before. My apologies, Senator oh. Lopez raised his hand. Senator Townsend, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Senator McBride, not me at all. Uh, Senator, Senator Lopez uh, raised his hand last second there. Wanted to make sure you saw it. Thank you, Senator Townsend. Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes, Senator Lopez. Good, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Townsend, thank you. And uh, I, I just wanted to reiterate as, as Catherine's senator and also as someone who considers himself fortunate to call Catherine and her wonderful husband, Kevin, dear friends, I just want to say thank you and congratulations. You know, you mentioned two words that you were firm and compassionate, uh, but you are also extremely kind and caring and you will do a phenomenal job. You have done a tremendous job in the People's Republic of Dewey Beach uh, for the last uh, eight years, uh, throughout the time that I've been able to serve uh, the people of Dewey in the 6th District. But uh, again, I just felt it important as your Senator to, to thank you because uh, again, as some of you may not know, and uh, Catherine and her husband also own a small business in Lewis on Savannah Road. And the work that they do in that small business and the contributions that they make selflessly to our local community is just tremendous. So uh, again, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. I look forward to, to voting yes uh, when the time comes during the roll call and regular session. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Senator, Senator Lopez. Lopez. Oh, I'm thank sorry. You. No, I just wanted to thank Senator thank Lopez. Thank you, Senator Lopez. Uh, the next uh, nominee that we've come to before us for Justice of the Peace will be Brett Graves. Mr. Graves. Good afternoon, Senators. Uh, Good afternoon. I'm, Graves. I'm very humbled to be here today. Thank you for having me before the committee as a nominee for Judge for Justice of Peace. A few of my qualifications. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Delaware. 
and I have over 28 years of state service. Uh, all of my state service has been with probation and parole as an officer, then later as a supervisor. Uh, my time with probation has given me a diverse experience with both law enforcement and with working with those involved with the criminal justice system and their families. Uh, I've been involved in almost every area of probation and parole at some point in my career. Just a few of those, uh, few of those areas include uh, pretrial services for Sussex County. I've been the supervisor for pretrial services for probably about eight years. Uh, this has involved the approving of bond reports for the Sussex County Court of Common Pleas. A pretrial unit also supervises defendants that have been released on bail while they're pending adjudication. Uh, this time of pretrial has given me knowledge of the state's bail system and would be beneficial and give me a head start in becoming a judge at the JP Court. Uh, as well, while I've been in probation, I've been on many occasions uh, a preliminary hearing officer, which involves in a hearing setting being the officer who determines if there's probable cause to forward a case uh, for to the Delaware uh, Parole Board for a violation or to return an interstate case to the sending state for a violation. Uh, a role not, not entirely dissimilar from being a judge. Um, also, I've uh, taken part in implementing the reentry program for Sussex County. Uh, this program involves the case planning and it, uh, helping of offenders after they complete their incarceration. Uh, my work with reentry has it reinforced my belief that there are many that have become involved in our criminal justice system that can go on to lead productive lives and not be rearrested. Uh, why do I want to become a judge? I would like to take my experience that I've obtained in the last 28 years and apply them as a judge for the JP court. Uh, also, I'd like to take my life experience as I believe that would be a benefit uh, to me making fair and appropriate decisions as a member of the court. Uh, state of Delaware has always been a great place for me. It's been a great, great place for me to grow up. Uh, Met my wife here. We both live here with our son, who's a student at the University of Delaware. And as the older I've gotten, the more I've uh, wanted to make my community a better place. Uh, if confirmed today and after training with the court in the education program, I believe I can make my community a better place through service as a JP judge. Uh, I've Thank you very much again for this opportunity, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Graves, very much. Um, are there any questions, comments from members of the committee? I do know that uh, Senator Lopez had called me earlier and wanted to uh, make some comments concerning your nomination. Senator Lopez? Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I do appreciate it. And, and just like with, uh, with Catherine, I wanted to congratulate Fred as as a senator and, uh, and thank him for his, his patience and his hard work uh, on behalf of the state of Delaware and, and wish him all the best as he continues to do even more uh, in a very important role where we really need him now. So uh, all those gifts, all those talents, all those years of experience uh, are gonna be so important going forward for you in this role. So we feel tremendously fortunate to have you and I feel tremendously supportive, uh, thankful to be supporting you in all of this. So thank you for your continued service to the people of the state of Delaware, Brett, and, uh, and again, wish you all the best and looking forward to the roll call. Thank you, Senator Lopez. Thank you, Senator Lopez, for your comments. Uh, seeing no further members wanting to ask questions or make comments, the next candidate that we have before us, Candace Whitelock. Ms. Whitelock. Good afternoon, my name is Candace Whitelock. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for the time that you've taken for this um, hearing committee. I know that it's not been a easy process. I am a teacher. I spend three and a half hours on Zoom every day or more so, so I know there are always glitches, so I wanna thank you. I was humbled by Governor Carney's nomination, and I do wanna shout out to Colonel McQueen. I met him at my brother John's retirement party, um, and I, and I believe I'm, <laughs> I'm right here with him. So
So I just wanted to say a shout out to him. Um, I have been an educator for 22 years. I've had the experience of being around family members who are in law enforcement and the justice of the peace court system. However, being a public school teacher, um, it has allowed me an opportunity to see the need to have a balance in the community between both the justice system and the citizens of the state of Delaware. Unfortunately, I work with many students and parents who live through adverse childhood experiences. We call them ACEs. I've realized there's a need to be able to provide them with resources to understand their social and emotional learning and to help them become productive members of society. As a teacher, I've developed the skills to mediate, problem solve, and resolve conflicts, which is something I believe has prepared me to be a judge. I have a desire to understand both sides, law enforcement and the citizens, and to render a decision that would be fair and equal while still protecting the community. Although I have not worked in the legal system as a teacher, I have worked with regulations, policies, and procedures. I'm confident that I could transfer my knowledge to the bench and be a fair judge. I wish to serve as a justice of the Peace Court judge because I feel I've made a great impact on the lives of my students and their parents as a teacher in the state of Delaware. And I feel that I can do that same thing as a judge. I've had the opportunity to work with people from all socioeconomic levels as a matter of fact, I do teach adult Hispanics English for Sussex Tech Adult Division at night and also help them to pass their citizenship tests. Um, I would like to be instrumental in bringing a balance between law enforcement and our community. One thing that really impacted me was when I was a child, I had the chance to observe a court case at the Justice of the Peace Court at number six in Harrington, which does not exist anymore, where my mother was a court clerk. I remember sitting there watching Judge Neiman as he listened to a case presented. As a child, I had always felt intimidated by judges because of the authority they portrayed, but Judge Neiman showed me a demeanor that I never forgot. Even though the defendant was found guilty, Judge Neiman explained to him his rights and discussed with him a reasonable amount of bail. From that moment on, I knew there would be there could be an equal balance between the judicial, judicial system and the community. And I would like to assist in helping this balance become a reality in our state. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Waylock. Are there any uh, questions, comments from members of the committee? And Senator Hocker. Your mute switch. Mrs. Waylock, I do thank you for coming in. I congratulate you on this appointment. I know it's been a very rough school year with your students not being in the classroom. Are you going to be able to finish the year with those students? Yes, sir. I discussed that um, last week with the chief magistrate um, and the other members of the committee, and they are going to allow me to finish out the school year, my year ends on June 16th. So I will end the school year with my students. So they will not be left without a teacher. It's so close to the school year. I bet they are hoping that you were able to finish out this year. And I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. I was too. That was one thing that all stuff stuck in my mind because we have developed such a close bond. And as a fifth grade teacher, you develop a close bond with your students anyway. So yes, I was, I was very fortunate that they would allow me to finish out the school year because my students have been negatively impacted enough. Good, thanks. Thank you, Senator Hawker. Senator Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's a fantastic question from Senator Hawker. And I'm very glad that your students are gonna have you through the end of the year. Um, and as, on the educator point, just as you know, from our call yesterday, I've got a. A mother is a retired educator, two, two of my three brothers are educators, and two sisters-in-law are educators, and just think the world of you all. And so um, it's, it's maybe not the norm, uh, the transition that's happening here, but I think with it comes a, a tremendously important perspective. Um, so just, just delighted to see an, an educator um, continue to have this kind of, uh, this kind of new impact on the, on the broader community, and, and thank you for your, uh, your interest and willingness to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Townsend. Any other uh, members, comments? Well, thank you so much, Ms. White. Thank um, you, Senator McBride. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank everyone today for their participation. We have no more nominees to come before us. Uh, before the uh, meeting ends, I just want to stress that uh, very, very appreciative 
the nominees were willing to participate via Zoom. Obviously, as several have mentioned, a very historic meeting in 200 and some years, it's the first committee meeting that, that I know of that the legislature has had uh, in a virtual way. So thank you so much for your cooperation. We appreciate your patience and cooperation in the proceedings. I ask uh, that you now exit the Zoom meeting and you may join the full Senate proceedings that are going to take place later today online via the link that uh, is available on the General Assembly website. Get that on YouTube. Our session will begin, uh, we're, we're hoping to start at 4.30. It might start just a, a bit late. The committee meetings ran a little longer than we thought. And, uh, and following our introductory proceedings and require business in relation to the legislative session broadcast virtually as pro tem of the and chair of the committee, I will bring forth each of your names or confirmation vote by the full Senate. I hope that you will join us through that link to follow the proceedings and uh, perhaps your family members may also tune in if they have access to the internet. With that, I thank everyone for the participation today, whether as a member of the body or as a citizen listening and watching these proceedings today through the YouTube link. For those watching these proceedings on YouTube, there will be a short recess, as I mentioned, during which the YouTube screen will um, state that the Senate will resume momentarily. At approximately 4.30 or shortly thereafter, we will go live again when Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, who presides over the Delaware State Senate, will call the Senate into session to be broadcast virtually. I thank you and I wish everyone a pleasant afternoon. We will see you a little bit after 4.30. Uh, at this time, being no further business before the committee, I would uh, adjourn the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.
Hello, good afternoon to my Senate colleagues. It's a pleasure as your Lieutenant Governor to be here with you today as we reconvene the ninth day of this legislative day of our second session of the 150th General Assembly. At this time, I would like to recognize our Senate Secretary. Madam Secretary, do you have communications or reports for us today? Madam President, the President Pro Tempore's list of pre-filed nominations dated May 20th. Madam President, Senate Madam President, McBride. may so much be considered a reading of the nomination pre-file. So considered, sir. At this time, any other communications, Madam Secretary? If not, I shall proceed to our majority leader. Madam President, communications from the governor and committee reports on nominations from the executive committee. Okay, um, in the meantime, what I would like to do, so we'll have you proceed then with our uh, committee reports, please, and communication. Communication from the governor, State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, John Carney, Governor, dated March 6, 2020, to the Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor, referencing resident judge of the Superior Court of the State of Delaware, Newcastle County, dear Lieutenant Governor Hall Long, Pursuant to Article 4, Section 3 of the Delaware Constitution, I write to inform you that I intend to submit the name of the Honorable Charles E. Butler to the Senate for confirmation and appointment as resident judge of the Superior Court of the State of Delaware, Newcastle County. I will submit the name of the Honorable Charles E. Butler to the Senate on March 18, 2020. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor, carbon copied, the Honorable David B. McBride, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, and Joy Bauer, Secretary of the Delaware State Senate. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, John Carney, Governor, dated March 6, 2020, to the Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor, referencing Judge of the Superior Court of the State of Delaware, Newcastle County, Dear Lieutenant Governor Har Long, pursuant to Article 4, Section 3 of the Delaware Constitution, I write to inform you that I intend to submit the name of Francis Joseph Pete Jones Jr. to the Senate for confirmation and appointment as judge of the Superior Court of the State of Delaware, Newcastle County. I will submit the name of Francis Joseph Pete Jones Jr. to the Senate on March 18, 2020. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Carbon copied to the Honorable David B. McBride, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, and Joy Bauer, Secretary of the Delaware State Senate. In addition, reports from the Executive Committee. Memo to Joy C. Bauer, Secretary of the Senate, from Senator David B. McBride, Chair, Senate Executive Committee, date May 27, 2020, referencing Executive Committee reports. Madam Secretary, due, the, due to the extraordinary situation of an executive committee hearing within virtual format, the following will suffice as the official reports from the committee and to be attached to the original nominations. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly Senate Executive Committee Report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of Colonel Nathaniel McQueen Jr. has been referred on March 12, 2020 reports back to the Senate on May 27, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate, 150th General Assembly Senate Executive Committee report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of the Honorable Charles Butler has been referred to on March 12, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly, Senate Executive Committee Report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of Francis Jones Jr. has been referred on March 12, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly, State uh, Senate Executive Committee Report. The Senate Executive Committee, to which the nomination of Walter Newton has been referred on May 18, 2020, 
reports the same back to the Senate on May 27th, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly Senate Executive Committee report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of Shania Young has been referred to on May 18th, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27th, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly Senate Executive Committee report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of the Honorable Catherine Hester has been referred to on May 18th, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27th, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly Senate Executive Committee report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of Brett Graves has been referred on May 18th, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27th, 2020, six favorable. State of Delaware Senate 150th General Assembly, Senate Executive Committee report. The Senate Executive Committee to which the nomination of Candace Whitelock has been referred to on May 18th, 2020, reports the same back to the Senate on May 27th, 2020, six favorable. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the communication from the governor, as well as the reports from the Executive Committee. Thank you so much, Assistant Secretary. Appreciate that. Madam Secretary, any additional communications or reports? Not at this time, Madam President. It's time then we will turn to our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Nicole Poor. Thank you, Madam President. This time I move the Senate adjourn until Wednesday, the 27th of May at 4.43 p.m. The Senate will adjourn. The Senate will come to order. Members and guests at this time, let us join in a moment of prayer. I'm pleased to share that as we come back together um, and reunited, we have Senator Petty John offering prayer today. And during that time, at the request of the host, uh, you will be uh, muted while I recite our Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, Senator Petty John. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, please bow your heads in an attitude of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today as humble servants as humble servants of you and as humble servants of the people who we represent in this body. Lord, we pray for those who have suffered and are suffering through this pandemic. We long to return to the days before this affected our communities and we have new appreciation for the many things we once took for granted. We know that you will hear the pleas of those who are faithful to you and we ask for your strength in being faithful servants to your word. Today we come before you and ask for guidance, for your temperament, and we ask for you to impart the wisdom that can only come from you. We ask for the safety of others, our first responders, our military members, for the medical professionals who are in our healthcare settings. We ask for strength for those who are suffering financially, mentally, medically, and physically. We ask these things with a pure heart and with pure intentions to do your work for our state. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call attendance roll call? Senator Bonini. Here. Here. Senator Brown. Present. Present. Senator Cloutier. Senator Cloutier. Present. Present. Senator Del Colo. Present. Present. Senator Ennis. Here. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Here. Senator Hawker. Present. Present. Senator Lawson. Present. Present. Senator Lockman. Here. Here. Senator Lopez. Here. Here. Senator McBride. Here. Here. Senator McDowell. Senator McDowell. Here. Here. Senator Pardee. Here. Here. Senator Pettyjohn. Present. Present. Senator Poor. Here. Here. Senator Richardson. Present. 
Present. Senator Sokola. Here. Here. Senator Sturgeon. Here. Here. Senator Townsend. Here. Here. Senator Walsh. Present. Present. Senator Wilson. Present. Present. Madam President, the attendance roll call for the 10th Legislative Day, 21 present. A quorum being present, our Senate is now officially in session on this 10th Legislative Day in the second part of our 150th General Assembly on the 27th of May, 2020 in our virtual format. Madam Secretary, could you kindly read or begin reading our minutes of our previous day? Ninth Legislative Day, Madam second President. Session. Senator Port? I move so much be considered the reading of the minutes. So moved. Madam Secretary, any additional communications or reports at this time? Not at this time, Madam President. Thank you. Senator Poor, we are with you at this time. Thank you, Madam President. As the Senate reconvenes today, I think it's important that we recognize how lives have changed as a result of this pandemic. This moment in our history has been difficult for all of us, and many have lost jobs, some have seen family businesses suffer, and many more are grieving the loss of loved ones. I believe it is important that we also stand together to recognize the struggle and suffering so many of our Delawareans, particularly those who are no longer with us. I move at this moment that we bow our heads in a moment of silence for all of those families still struggling today. The moment of silence is honored. Please bow your heads in silence. Thank you for that moment of silence. Senator Poor, we are back to you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Madam President, at this time, I'm gonna yield to Senator McBride for the consideration of House Concurrent Resolution number 85. Senator McBride. Madam President and uh, Senator, Senate colleagues, so much has transpired since we recessed the legislative day of January the 30th. I am thankful all are safe and healthy and have been able to participate in the continuation of legislative business within this virtual format. Since last we gathered in the Senate chamber, we have been compelled to answer the restrictions relating to public gatherings, protect the health of members and staff and members of the public, normally attending regular Senate sessions all amidst the concerns and challenges of moving forward within the global pandemic. We have been haunted by the overwhelming images and reports from neighboring states and throughout this nation of unindebted medical facilities, nursing facilities on lockdown, first responders and essential personnel falling victim to this scourge, food shortages, and rampant unemployment. We in the first state have worked together to navigate unchartered arenas, addressing uncertainty, disruption, and fear. Through the tireless efforts of our governor and his team of experts in their fields, dire situations have had to be addressed and difficult decisions had to be made in the interest of common good. It's been a long and tiring road, and our journey is not complete. Near to 10,000 of our citizens in the state of Delaware, family, friends, and neighbors are known to have contracted the COVID-19 virus. And so tragically, over 330 Delawareans have succumbed to it. Our heartfelt condolences to those bereaved families our steadfast commitment to those struggling recovery remains. We have been inspired by a new generation of Delaware heroes, women and men from our own communities and neighborhoods, every day serving on the front lines, physicians, nurses, respiratory therapists, paramedics, law enforcement officers, firefighters, ambulance attendants, and members of the Delaware National Guard 
so many personally known to us deserve our unwavering respect and appreciation. Special sentiments of thanks go out to those staffing our grocery and convenience stores, pharmacies, restaurants, child care centers, and so many other essential venues. They quietly serve in the trenches. Let us not take their efforts for granted. Our governor has announced a series of encouraging plans to phase in a revival of economic activity and the gradual reopening of businesses. Yet, we must remain vigilant in our awareness of this unprecedented major health concern. We in the Senate have had to address the challenges of continuing the operations of our legislative session within the public health concerns, guidelines, and gathering restrictions. Today, for the first time in our state's history, we have convened a legislative day in virtual format. Numerous meetings between leaders, staff, and IT personnel have taken place, attempting to provide the most efficient and safe environment in which to conduct business. All of our efforts have focused on the most effective process to assure appropriate public access to our proceedings. We have been compelled to try every avenue available to us while being mindful of public safety. As earlier stated, there is still much uncertainty as we proceed many decisions yet to be made to effectively meet this health and economic crisis. There is one certainty, the Delaware State Senate will continue to take action, work with the House and the governor to do whatever may be necessary to meet this challenge. I thank all of you for the help, your time and your support. I therefore, Madam President, would like to ask at this time that House concurrent resolution be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. Senator McBride, thank you for those well-spoken words. And uh, before we go to the official reading in, we have one matter of business where our secretary needs to read in the communication um, and we'll do so. And uh, we've also had, I believe, a member to raise their hand, but in process of the format, we're gonna go back to our Secretary who will read in the necessary communication. Madam Secretary. The House wishes to inform the Senate that it has passed House Concurrent Resolution 85 and requests the concurrence of the Senate. Thank you, ma'am. With the action on the floor at this time, um, we will go to, I believe, Senator- uh, Madam President. Yes, Madam Senator President. McBride. Is, yeah. is the resolution now properly before us? Yes, it is, sir. So it's back. I, I wanted to make a few comments about the resolution. Sure. Okay, go ahead. If I might first. And Absolutely. then obviously to offer members sure. uh, comments, anything they want to make. Absolutely, yes. And I'll be very brief. Uh, House Concurrent Resolution 85 uh, accepts and approves the actions that we're now taking in the Senate and the Speaker of the House did yesterday and adopts procedures for conducting virtual meetings of the General Assembly and its legislative committees during an emergency event. And uh, this particular resolution has been vetted by all um, of the lawyers in all four caucuses. And uh, we work very closely with the leadership in the developing, the development of this uh, particular resolution. At this time, Madam President, uh, there may be members that wanna make comments, questions and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much, Senator McBride. And again, I know you speak uh, eloquently on all the members and I know our governor's office and all are very appreciative of the leadership each of the members of our Senate and the staff and others have done during this period of time addressing so many needs in our community. Um, at this time, the one hand that did come up I, that I saw was Senator Lawson. Thank you, ma'am, I appreciate it. And welcome back everyone. Uh, I have some concerns with the resolution. And one, I feel it's a bad way to do business. There's many in this in the 15th senatorial district, as well as others that don't have access to the internet and they can't see what we're doing. And they don't have the ability 
there's no way to reach out to them, particularly in the Amish community. And I'm not comfortable with passing a resolution to circumvent a law. It's a, it, on the excuse that there's no space available. This sets a precedent that can and will be abused in the future, much like our state of emergency legislation now. I will be voting no. Thank you for your comments. And I think in our virtual format, um, when our Senator McBride delivered those remarks and we had read in by the title and the communication, we do need our assistant secretary because we don't have our reading clerk here with us to read in by title only House Concurrent Resolution 85. Thank you all for your patience as we venture in this new virtual world. So at this time, if you could kindly have our assistant secretary read by title only House Concurrent Resolution 85. Thank you. House Concurrent Resolution number 85, sponsored by Representative Schwarzkopf, Representative Longhurst, Representative Mitchell, Representative Deshort, Representative Dukes, Senator McBride, Senator Poor, Senator Townsend, Senator Hawker, and Senator Cloutier, accepting and approving the May 14th, 2020 actions of the President pro tempore of the State Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, declaring an emergency under Section 5, Article 2, and Section 1, Article 17 of the Delaware Constitution, and adopting rules of procedure for conducting virtual meetings of the General Assembly and its legislative committees during an emergency. Madam President, that concludes the reading of House Concurrent Resolution Number 85 by title only. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Secretary, for having read that in. Um, at this time, we have another hand that has raised, um, Senator Wilson. Thank you, Madam President. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be part of this virtual uh, setting today. But the state constitution does not envision us to conduct business uh, via computer or phoning in. It provides an option for alternative sites to meet in the state house or legislative hall uh, is not an option. Uh, I do believe that all options have not clearly been examined as far as alternative meeting locations or the way to meet safely in legislative hall. As of June the 1st, gathering of 250 or less is permitted under phase one. The House and Senate essential, essential staff uh, to conduct business does not exceed that, this number. Constituents have also voiced concerns regarding the virtual session that they are worried that this that will be a time of unconstitutional uh, agendas or questionable legislation. However, I realize that this is just for this setting, but I concerned that we're trying to set a presence here. It is time to return to work in a manner that is safe. We have been out of session since March 11th, and it is now time to conduct uh, people's business. This is what we were elected to do. Every day when I enter Legislative Hall on the west side and walk up those marble steps, I feel as though the people of the 18th Senatorial District has confidence in me to represent them to the best of my ability. I do not see this happening in a virtual setting. I just didn't have the same feeling when I walked in my office at my home today. Thank you. Thank you. I see no other hands raised, so we will go back to uh, Senator David McBride. Hello. Oh, Senator Richardson, I'm sorry, did not see you. We'll go to Senator Richardson. Yeah, Senator Richard, that is Anna. I'm sorry, we did not see that. I did not come on my screen, but as a team collectively, we're navigating the virtual water. Senator Richardson. Thank you, Madam President. I know at the practice session, it was mentioned that if any of the senators got kicked off, that we would delay the session until everyone was back on. I didn't see that in the resolution. I didn't see that in any of the, uh, in any printed form. Is that in printed form somewhere or not? That would be at the call of the chair here and in agreement with uh, the Senate body when we met. So if we see that occur, um, we will indeed at the direction that we received from our Senate leadership um, that that would sir occur. So let's hope today that uh, we are here. So thank you for that inquiry. And back to then the um, resolution at hand, Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just want to make Double sure that there are no other uh, members that want to make comments or ask questions. And if, if there aren't, um, obviously, then I would like to ask for a roll call on House Concurrent Resolution Number 85. I 
Seeing no other hand, sir, what we'll do is turn to our secretary, if you would kindly call the roll on House Concurrent Resolution number 85. Senator Panini. No. No. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Couture. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. No. No. Senator. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. 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 No. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. No. No. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. No. No. Madam President, the roll call on House Concurrent Resolution 85, 17 yes and 4 no. Having received the required sufficient number of votes, House Concurrent Resolution number 85 hereby declared the Senate. <coughs> Madam Secretary, any additional communications? Madam President, communications from the President Pro Tempore and Speaker of the House dated May 14th and May 27th. Madam President. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I ask that so much be considered the reading of the minutes. So noted. Senator Poor, I think I'm back to you. Unless, Madam Secretary, anything else on your list today? Not at this time, Madam President. Okay, hey, Senator Poor, we're to you. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I'm going to yield to Senator McBride for executive business. Senator McBride, executive business, sir. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President and uh, members of the Senate, uh, earlier today, the executive committee met to consider a number of nominations sent down from the governor. Uh, historic, first time in the history of the state of Delaware as a committee met in a virtual format. Uh, we had a very good meeting. I thought it went very well. Obviously, I'll leave it to others to decide whether or not I'm correct about that. I was pleased with the way the uh, committee meeting went. Uh, members had a chance to ask questions and make comments concerning the nominees. And uh, the nominees were well received and they uh, were, and I'm thanking them very much for their cooperation in appearing virtually. Uh, all eight nominees that we had appeared before the committee in a uh, virtual session. And so at this time, Madam President, I would like to ask that the uh, name of Colonel Nathaniel McQueen Jr. as Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security be brought before the Senate for consideration. I don't think so. I noted. Thank you. And we will turn to our Secretary and Assistant Secretary and ask that the nomination of Colonel Nathaniel McQueen Jr. to be Cabinet Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security be read in. Assistant Secretary. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated March 17, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware. In conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, Jr., 215 Hazel Drive, Bear, Delaware, 19701, to be appointed Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security commence the date of swearing in and serve at the pleasure of the governor. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed, sincerely, John C. Carney, governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, Jr. The nomination of Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, Jr. to be nominated to the Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security before the Senate, Senator McBride. I'd like to ask for roll call, please. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call the roll on Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, 
to be Delaware's next Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Polo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Colonel Daniel McQueen Jr., 21 yes. Have you received the required and sufficient number of votes? It is hereby confirmed by the Delaware Senate that Colonel Nathaniel McQueen Jr. is hereby declared the next Cabinet Secretary of Delaware's Department of Safety and Homeland Security. And I want to remind members and we want to congratulate certainly um, our Colonel Nathaniel McQueen, our next Cabinet Secretary and the previous Acting Secretary for her service. I have noticed our team as you're trying to make comments, we cannot always see if you're waving. So please use the Zoom participant function. Um, Senator Lawson, I believe you might have had your hand raised with Colonel McQueen. I don't know if you have since withdrawn your hand, but I want to make sure people have a chance to speak if they so desire. I would like to, ma'am. Thank you very much. Senator Lawson, yeah. Having served with Colonel McQueen and uh, is actually one of his trainers when he went through the academy, which I really hate to admit I'm that old, uh, it's great to see him excel. And uh, I have every confidence He'll be as good a secretary as he was a colonel. And congratulations, Nate. Thank you. Thank you for that. And again, for members, if you're having an issue with that, you know, uh, staff can assist you. Um, back to you, Senator McBride, with our executive business, sir. Have a nap. Okay. <laughs> Senator Del Colo, I believe, one is. Senator Del Colo. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I saw your speaking. All right. <laughs> So, uh, Madam President, thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to request that the name of the Honorable Charles Butler for resident judge of Superior Court, Newcastle County, be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. So noted. Madam Secretary, please uh, pass along the bill backers so that we can have read in the nomination for resident judge of Delaware Superior Court in Newcastle County, the Honorable Charles Butler. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated March 17, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware. In conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. The Honorable Charles Butler, 2003 North Grant Avenue, Wilmington, Delaware, 19806, to be appointed resident judge of the Superior Court of Newcastle County for a term to expire 12 years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed, sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of the Honorable Charles Butler. Thank you for reading that in, sir. And before I call his name, I'll remind members um, for the vote to please make sure your screen are on so we can visibly see you as we go through roll call. So at this time, um, we have before us the nomination of the resident judge of Superior Court of Newcastle County, the Honorable Charles Butler, Senator McBride. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I don't know if there are any members. You have no one raising their hand. If not, I would uh, request respectfully a roll call on the name before us, please. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call wall on the nomination of resident judge for Superior Court of Newcastle County, the Honorable Charles Butler? Senator Panini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. 
Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hanna. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on the Honorable Charles Butler, 21 yes. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, it is hereby confirmed that the Delaware Senate confirms the resident judge of Superior Court in Newcastle County as the Honorable Charles Butler. We wish him well. Senator McBride, back to you, sir, for continued executive business. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I would like to request that the name of Francis Jones Jr. be appointed judge of Superior Court be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. So noted. Madam Secretary, if you kindly give the bill back to our assistant uh, secretary to read in the nomination for judge of Superior Court of Delaware, the appointment for Francis Jones Jr. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated March 17th, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, in conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. Francis Jones, Jr., 722 Green Hill Avenue, Wilmington, Delaware, 19805, to be appointed a judge of the Superior Court for a term to expire 12 years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed, sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Francis Jones, Jr. Thank you, sir. The nomination uh, for judge in Superior Court of Delaware, uh, Francis Jones, Jr. is before the Senate. Senator McBride. Madam President, this time I would like to ask for roll call of the name that is now before us. So noted. <laughs> Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll in the nomination for the judge of Delaware Superior Court, Francis Jones, Jr. Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Senator Brown. Senator Brown. Absent. Yes. <laughs> Senator Brown. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Francis Jones Jr., 21 yes. Having received the required sufficient number of votes, we hereby confirm the nomination of Francis Jones Jr. as a judge in Delaware Superior Court. <coughs> Wishing the best to 
our newly confirmed justice. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to request that the name of Walter Newton, the Justice of the Peace, be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. Madam Secretary, if you could kindly give the bill back or to our Assistant Secretary to read it and the nomination of Walter Newman to be considered as a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated May 26th, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware. In conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. Walter Newton, 2109 Pyle Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19805, to be appointed a Justice of the Peace for a term to expire four years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Walter Newton. Nomination of Walter Newton to be a Justice of Delaware's Court of Justice of Peace before the Senate, Senator McBride. I'd like to ask for roll call on the name now before us, please, Madam President. And it appears that uh, before roll call, we had a hand go up. Senator Lawson, you had a hand. Sir, if you'd like to make a comment. Senator Lawson, or was that an accident, an accidental hand bump? No, that was failing to unmute. Okay. But anyway, thank you, ma'am. Uh, knowing Wally for some time, I highly recommend him for the position. He's, a, he's done an awesome job with the Delaware State Police and with the court system now, and I highly recommend him. Congratulations, Wally. Thank you, Senator. Seeing no other uh, hands raised, uh, the Senator uh, Pro Tempore had asked for a roll call. So uh, I believe so, Senator McBride, had you asked for the roll call, sir? I did. Thank okay. you, Madam President. Thank you. At this time, Madam Secretary, would you kindly call Wool the nomination of Walter Newman, Newton, to be a member of the Delaware Justice of Peace? Senator Panini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Coutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, Paul Cole and Walter Newton, 21 yes. Having I mean, received the required sufficient number of votes, the nomination of Walter Newton to be a member of the Delaware's Justice of Peace is hereby confirmed by the Delaware Senate. The best of wishes to him as well. Next, Senator McBride on continued on our nominations for Justice of Peace, sir. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to request that the name of Shania E. Young for Justice of the Peace be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. Madam Secretary, if you will please share with our Assistant Secretary to read in by the bill backer the nomination of Shania Young, Young before the Delaware Senate to be a member of Delaware's Justice of Peace. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated May 26, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, in conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following, Shania E. Young, 194 Darling Street, Newark, Delaware, 19702, to be appointed a Justice of the Peace for a term to expire four years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Shania Young. 
nomination of Shania Young to become a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace before the Senate. Senator McBride, I do not see any hands raised. Back to you, sir. Thank you, Madam President. This time I'd like to request that uh, roll call be taken on the name before us, please. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call a roll on the nomination of Shania Young to be Delaware's member of our Justice of Peace? Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Poutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Johnson. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Shania E. Young, 21 yes. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, the nomination hereby confirmed by the Delaware Senate that Shania Young is now a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace. Thank you and best of wishes to her. Uh, we have just three members uh, nominations before us. I wanna remind members um, from a courtesy, if when you vote, if you could show your face, that is appreciated. Thank you. Um, so next, Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to request that the Honorable Catherine Hester, the Justice of the Peace, be brought before the court Senate for consideration, please. Madam Secretary, if you kindly share the bill back over there, Assistant Secretary, to read in the nomination of the Honorable Catherine Hester to be uh, a confirmed member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated May 26, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, in conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. The Honorable Catherine Hester, 30825 Ridge Court, Lewis, Delaware, 19958, to be appointed a Justice of the Peace for a term to expire four years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of the Honorable Catherine Hester. The nomination of the Honorable Catherine Hester before the Senate to be a Justice of the Peace for Delaware. Any, I see no hands, sir. Senator McBride, it's to you, sir. Thank you, Madam President. This time I'd like to ask for a roll call on the name now before us, please. So noted. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call a roll on the Honorable Catherine Hester to be a confirmed member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace? Senator Bonini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Poutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on the Honorable Catherine Hester, 21 yes. 
having received the required and sufficient number of votes, the Senate hereby confirms the Honorable Catherine Hester as a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace. And we wish her well in addition. Senator McBride, back to you. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to ask that the name of Brett Graves, the Justice of the Peace, be brought before the Senate for consideration, please. Madam Secretary, if you kindly have our Assistant Secretary read in the nomination of Brett Graves to be considered a confirmed member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated May 26, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, in conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following, Brett Graves, 130 Harbinger Drive, Lewis, Delaware, 19958, to be appointed a Justice of the Peace for a term to expire four years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Brett Graves. Nomination of Brett Graves should be confirmed as a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace before the Senate, Senator McBride. Madam President, I'd like to ask for roll call the name before us, please. So noted. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on the nomination of Brett Graves to be considered and confirmed as a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace? Senator Bonini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Coutillo. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Brett Graves, 21 yes. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, the confirmation of Brett Graves as a member of Delaware's Justice of Peace, confirmed by the Delaware Senate. <laughs> the best wishes to you, sir, as well. Congratulations. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to request the name of Candace Whitelock be brought before the Senate for consideration of justice of the peace, please. Madam Secretary, if you kindly have the, the bill backer read in by our Assistant Secretary on uh, the nomination of Candace Whitelock to be a confirmed member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace, please. State of Delaware, Office of the Governor, dated May 26, 2020, to the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, in conformity with the Constitution and the laws of the State of Delaware, I hereby nominate and appoint for the consent and confirmation of the Senate the following. <coughs> Candace Whitelock. 7744 Gay Drive, Seaford, Delaware, 19973, to be appointed a Justice of the Peace for a term to expire four years from the date of swearing in. Your consideration of this nomination is appreciated. Signed sincerely, John C. Carney, Governor. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the nomination of Candace Whitelock. The nomination of Candace Whitelock before the Senate for a confirmation for a justice of the peace. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I would like to ask for a roll call the name that is now before us, please. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on the nomination of Candace Whitelock to be considered a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace? Senator Bonini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. 
Senator McDowell? Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee? Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Yes. Senator Poor? Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson? Yes. Yes. Senator Sicola? Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon? Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson? Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Candace Whitelock, 21 yes. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, the nomination of Candace Whitelock to be a member of Delaware's Justice of the Peace hereby confirmed by the Senate. Congratulations, the best to you, Mrs. Whitelock. Senator Madam, McBride. Madam President, that uh, completes the nominee from the Executive Committee. And at this time, I would yield back to our distinguished, honorable Majority Leader, Senator Nicole Poor. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I move the 10th legislative day stands in recess until the call of the President Pro Tem. Thank you all very much for doing our virtual session today, seeing and hearing no objection. The 10th legislative day will stand in recess. The best, be safe, be well. Thank you. Valerie, are you there? Everyone, please be safe.